This trade here on the New Zealand Yen worked out extremely well for a number of different reasons. One of the most important though is that I was patient and waited for the market to get to a major level of structure before deciding to place a trade. Now, there is a very particular way of finding major levels of support and resistance and a particular way to trade around them that actually creates money making opportunities in any financial market. But if you get this wrong, then it's going to lead to a ton of losing trades. On the flip side of that coin, if you get this right, it could be that push you need to becoming a money making trader. And that's why in this video, what I want to do is show you everything you need to know about trading around major levels of support and resistance. That way you can start making trades like this, have a consistent edge over the market and a consistent way to place trades based on major structure moving forward in your own trading. And that I hope will get you one step closer to that goal you have of becoming a professional trader. So if that sounds good, go ahead and click that like button for me. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Go ahead and subscribe. If you are new, click the notification bell because we come out with content like this each and every week. If you're already subscribed, then welcome back. You know what's coming. Let the intro roll. Welcome back. And the first thing we're going to talk about is what support and resistance are for those of you who are brand new. After that, we're going to dive into how to find them and properly draw them on a chart so you can actually trade around them once the market gets there. After that, I'm going to teach you what I call OTZ or optimal trading zones. Now these are similar to support and resistance, but they provide much more accurate trading opportunities. After that lesson, we're going to talk about how to use support and resistance on multiple time frames in order to increase the accuracy of your trading opportunities as well. And after that, we're going to dive into the entry reasons that I like to use in these zones so that by the end of the video, you have a complete grasp, not only on what support and resistance are, but how you can take support and resistance into any financial market and create a consistent money making strategy out of them. So with that said, let's start off with what is support and resistance. Support and resistance is a really simple concept. Support is an area in the market that has previously been used as support. When the market gets back down to that area, it's a likely place that the market will push that price even higher from that support level. Resistance is also a pretty simple concept. It is an area in price that once the market fell from, that once was resistance, and when the market gets back up to that area, there's a likely scenario that that level is going to act as resistance and push the market lower. Now, there are two very specific types of support and resistance we're going to talk about. What we just looked at on the chart is what is considered counter trend support and resistance. These are levels that are causing reversals in the market. As you can see, market was pushing down, reversed up. Market was pushing up, reversed down. The next type of support and resistance we're going to talk about is what's called trend continuation support and resistance. So let's dive into trend continuation support and resistance right now. Trend continuation support and resistance is when the market is trending. And what trending means is the market is making a high, a higher low, a higher high, a higher low, a higher high, and a higher low. As long as this continues, we're considered to be in an uptrend. When in an uptrend, the way we use trend continuation support and resistance levels, or one of my favorite ways to use them, is to wait for the market to break a previous high, like we have right here. Let's use a trend line for this. When that break happens, I'm going to be looking back at the previous level of resistance for possible trades. If that break happens again to this resistance level, then I'm going to be looking in that level for possible trades to the upside. So as the market trends, you will see this happen over and over. We'll get a break of resistance, a pullback to that previous resistance and the market heading higher a break of resistance, a pullback to that previous resistance and the market heading higher. And this is one of the ways we use trend continuation support. We're looking at the previous resistance level to turn to support. What I want to do now is go to a bearish example of this where we're waiting for support to turn into resistance. So let's take a look at a bearish example of this before we move on. Here on the New Zealand Yen, we also have a good example of bearish trend continuation support and resistance levels. Let's talk about it. So for a bearish level, we're looking for the market to head lower, pushing down to a level of support, right? 
the market gets supported by that level once that level breaks we're looking at it as resistance to push the market lower so in this example we have a market pushing lower creating that support pushing up breaking through that support that's when we know okay this level is a level i want to look at for possible resistance if i get a pullback into it this is how we use support and resistance for trend continuation trading then the market pulls back into that level and all of a sudden we get that next push down now let's continue and see what happens right here okay so we have this is our previous level of support the market just pulled back into it take a wild guess do you think the market's going up or down from this level let's check and see if you were right oh no the market went up now what well guess what guys this happens nothing in trading is going to be 100 percent, including support and resistance what we're using this to do is help create a money making edge over the market i'm not talking about winning 100 percent of the time i'm talking about a money making uh advantage where we can actually win over 50 percent of the time with more than a one-to-one -one reward to risk ratio and over a large sample size we can make money which is the entire point of real trading so with that said let's go ahead and move on now to how we draw support and resistance levels on a chart so we can trade around them before we even get started i need you to make your chart look exactly like this <laughs> just kidding unfortunately though this is what people think of whenever they think of trading around support and resistance levels but in reality there is no point in time when you should have more than two to four levels maximum on your chart so what i want to do is show you how to draw these levels in to the point that you don't have a million lines just cluttering your chart instead you have two to four levels that you're paying attention to at any one given time let's dive into that right now okay so the first type of support and resistance we're going to talk about is trend continuation levels and unfortunately drawing in support and resistance is something that inherently is subjective it's, it's very difficult to have set in stone rules for support and resistance and it's something that will come with time and experience but for me what i like to do is just place support and resistance levels a little bit above the bodies of the candles of that level and a little bit below the bodies of that level so doing that gives me an area because support and resistance are not lines on a chart they are areas of value where the market may react from in terms of support the market may go up from that area so we have to remember that we're drawing areas and not lines the way i do that is a little bit above the bodies of those candles and a little bit below i don't really have an objective rule i wish i did i wish there was a way to draw this without being confused but that's just how it goes until you have a little more experience in practice but the way we look for these trend continuation support and resistance levels is exactly what I'm going to teach you right now. So while we're looking for trend continuation levels, as we talked about a little bit earlier in the video, what we're waiting on is the market to be in a trend, right? We're making higher lows. We're making higher highs than previous highs. While we're doing that, and I'm going to give you a really easy way, actually right now, let me go ahead and do that. Plot a 50 period moving average on the chart. Just as a really easy, easy objective way to plot these levels what you're going to do is wait for the market to make a new highest high literally the highest high the market has made since the last time it broke above the 50 period moving average what i mean by that if we scroll the chart back the last time we broke above the 50 period moving average was right in this area we started breaking above we pulled back we broke above we pulled back the levels you're going to pay attention to are only when the market yet again breaks and closes above the highest high since the last break above the 50 period moving average so what we're going to do is every new highest high above the 50 period moving average we're going to plot our area of support or resistance in this case the way it would look is the last break yet again that we had above the 50 period moving average is right here so what we would start doing after that break is we would have a zone in this area a little bit above the bodies a little bit below the bodies and as you can see the market came down didn't quite hit that area what's the next level we have so as we push up higher making new higher highs pushing down getting some support off the 50 period moving average almost getting into that zone of support breaking into what new higher highs as we break into those new higher highs we look back at the previous level of resistance right here as our support level and why do we do that because it is the highest high since the break 
of the 50 period moving average. So at this point, the way we would draw this in is we would go, okay, let me go a little bit above the bodies. Let me go a little bit below the bodies of the previous level of resistance that should turn into support. And as you can see, the market comes down to that level and pushes it higher. Again, it's not 100%, but it's a way we can get an advantage and a money-making edge over the market. We'll continue this process. As we keep pushing higher, what happens? We push up to this new high right here. We push down to the support level. We break into what? New highs. As we break into new highs, what we're going to do is plot a little bit above the bodies of the candles, a little bit below, as our next level of trend continuation support to the upside in a bullish trend like we have on the chart right now. So as you can see, yet again, the market pushes into new highs, pulls back to that previous level of resistance. That level turns into support and pushes the market higher. What happens here? Here we break through. As I said, there's nothing in trading that's going to be 100%. This is just a way to have a money-making edge. This may have been a losing trade. That's something that in trading, you will have to learn how to deal with. You have to manage risk correctly and you'll have to lose trades. That's just part of it. Your job is not to win every trade, is to have some kind of advantage over the market that you're trading. And this is one of the ways we do that, is by these trend continuation support and resistance levels. One final example of bullish trend continuation is something we're seeing right now on the Euro Yen that has not happened yet. And it is the fact that we just did what? If this is our previous high and we just broke and closed above it, what are we waiting on? We're going to be waiting on the market to retest the previous high as long as we keep trading above the 50 period moving average. We're waiting on that retest of that previous high and then we're waiting on that level to become support because it used to be resistance. Now, in terms of a trending market, it should become support if we're in a strong trend. So that's what we'd be looking for here on the euro yen in terms of a trend continuation level of support this is the bullish example of trend continuation support and resistance let's dive into a bearish example right now okay so take a wild guess on the chart right now what level would you be paying attention to for possible short trades sell trades because right now we're looking at a bearish trend and we're looking for levels of support to become resistance in trend continuation support and resistance trading so as we look at this chart what level do you see? What level sticks out to you as a level of support that should turn to resistance? As we push down here, what we have is a high to a low, a low to a lower high, and then a lower low immediately afterwards. At the point that we get a lower low, similar to how we had a higher high in the bullish example, at the point that we get a lower low, what we're looking at is this previous low to become possible resistance. That previous level of support that pushed the market higher in this pullback, that previous swing low at this point, if we're in a strong trend, should become the next swing high before the market continues in that trend to the downside. So the way we would manage this in terms of drawing our trend continuation levels is we put a box slightly above the bodies of those candles, slightly below the bodies of those candles, and we would drag that box over Let, let's do it like this let's put it on market replay mode if the market was right here just to give you a good example of this this is what i would have drawn in then i would be waiting for in this case the dollar canada which is the chart we're on to pull back to this level and then i'd be looking for possible short opportunities for a trend continuation trade from this trend continuation resistance in this case area so now that we've talked about trend continuation areas, let's dive into counter trend areas of support and resistance. All right, so with trend continuation levels, what we're looking to do is capture the next big move out of the trend by finding the level of resistance that was just broken in a bullish trend or support that was just broken in a bearish trend. And we're trying to hop on that trend. With counter trend levels, what we're looking for is reversals. We're looking for a market that's been trending up, but it's going to find a level eventually that it goes down from. We're looking for that level to provide reversal opportunities. By far, reversals are a way to get amazing targets. What I mean by that is you can get huge reward to risk ratios by trading reversals, but it's important to know how and when to trade those reversal opportunities. So that's what we're going to talk about right now. And the way we do this is right now on the New Zealand yen. Let me just give you an example to help explain it better. 
on the New Zealand yen, we are about to start making new highs, right? As as in where price is right now. We're going to start making new highs if this market continues going up. What I would do in this case, something people get confused about, I would not look at this level to be my resistance level. This is just the latest high in an uptrend. That's not going to be your counter trend level of resistance in this case. Again, it's just the latest swing high in the uptrend we're currently in on the New Zealand yen. So what we do look for though, is we place a line. I'm gonna do a horizontal line that we can see throughout historic data, right? So let's do this on the high that we were just talking about, right? Whatever the highest high above the 50 period moving average, we can use the same rule. We place a horizontal line on that high. We look back in historic data and we find the next level of resistance that this market will inevitably hit if it continues higher. So let's do that. Let's scroll the chart out and look left. And right now we're actually at that level, right? But we've already had a move down. Let me explain what I mean by that. Here we have a level of resistance. This by far is going to be that level that you look for possible reversal opportunities. But in the case of the New Zealand yen, we've already had the opportunity, it's came and gone. What I mean by that is as you can see, the market hit this level that we just pointed out and saw that there was resistance looking left. It also created a double top and ended up reversing for a moment. That means that right now, we're not gonna continue to use that level. We're gonna wait for the market to get into new highs. Remember, new highs above the 50 period moving average, meaning we gotta break above this, and then we're gonna look for the next level up that's a resistance level. So let's look left yet again, so we can look for that next level. We have a level here that we just looked at, this level. If we look up and to the left, what's the next level of resistance? Right in this area, right? So what we're gonna do, is plot a zone a little bit above the candles, a little bit below the candles of this resistance level. This is how we draw in our counter trend resistance. The steps I just took you through is exactly what I do to find these reversal levels. We look at the high of price, we go above the highest high price has got to in a bullish case to look for possible resistance because we're looking for reversal levels, counter trend levels. We find that next high in price and that is the level we use as a counter trend level of resistance in this case and as a reversal level to possibly take trades from. Let's zoom the chart out and go back over to real price so we can imagine this and, and I can give you a better example. Right now what we're looking for, this being the case, is the New Zealand yen is probably going to continue trending higher, maybe pull back to our trend continuation level, and then continue higher to the point that it reaches between the price of 80.86 and 81.36. That area is our next counter trend level of resistance because we're in a bullish trend right now. We're looking for reversals. We're looking for the market to start heading lower. And this is how we find the reversal level is the next level of resistance price will inevitably hit if it pushes higher let's now take a look at an example of a bearish version of this the market's heading lower we're looking for a reversal level to push it higher let's take a look at that right now okay so just to give you an example on real time real charts right now this is where the dollar swiss is we're not in replay mode nothing like that where the chart is right now just to see if you're getting it try to point out the next level of counter trend structure it's support because it's counter trend we're going down but we're looking for a support level to push the market higher try to point out that next level of counter trend support for yourself let's see if you got it right so the next level if the market is right here and this is the lowest low in price since the break of the 50 period moving average the trend continuation level would be a pullback to this area right that would be our trend continuation level. The counter trend level is the next level of support as the market continues lower that it will hit inevitably if it does continue lower. So what we have in that case is a level of support right here. So this would be our counter trend support level. It, is, it makes it so simple to have semi-objective rules. As I said earlier, support and resistance, especially drawing them in, is inherently subjective. There's no real set in stone rules to do it. but having objective ways to find reversal zones and to find trend continuation zones is what can boost your trading to you becoming a money-making trader. If you follow them correctly, use good risk management. There's a lot more to trading than structure, but I want you to at least 
understand what structure is and how to trade around it by the end of this video. So this is the way we find our counter trend structure levels. We look at the lowest low price has made it to since the break of the 50 period moving average. We then look left and find the next level of support the market will inevitably hit if it continues lower. That is our counter trend level. The same thing goes for bullish. We just did an example of that. So now that you understand what counter trend levels look like, let's go through what OTZs are, optimal trading zones. This is how we add massive amounts of accuracy to our trades other than just regular support and resistance levels. I'll see you there. Okay, so OTZ again stands for optimal trading zones. And these are very similar to support and resistance levels with one small caveat. Look at me using big words with one small difference. And what we're doing, let's talk about this before we jump into OTZs. What we're doing when we're building a, a bias in financial market trading, when, when we're building a reason to enter a trade and actually go long or go short, is we're combining a lot of different factors in order to give ourselves the biggest edge possible. That's what a trading strategy is. That's what a trading plan consists of. So what we're doing with OTZs is we're adding a little bit of confluence, not only with having support and resistance, but we're adding a little bit more to that trading plan. The more pieces of this puzzle you put together, eventually you have the whole puzzle and you have an entire trading plan. That's what we're doing with OTZ. So instead of like regular support and resistance, we're going to do the same exact thing in terms of plotting the levels, but the only time a level is considered an OTZ is when we've plotted it on the chart as a regular support or resistance levels in the same way that we've done previously in the video. We plot it on the chart the same way. The only time it's actually an OTZ or optimal trading zone to add a little bit of confluence here is when that level has been tested multiple times. It's a great example here on the New Zealand Yen. We've already looked at this currency pair and we've talked about this level between 81.36 and 80.86. This level happens to be not only the next level of resistance up, that's one factor. That's one caveat, right? That's not, that, that's not the only thing we're going to look for. That's just a resistance level. But considering that this resistance level has not only been tested once, but has been tested twice as support here and also a little level of resistance here. And if we continue looking left, we can see that it was support yet again back here. That is the difference between a regular level of resistance and an OTZ or optimal trading zone. The only difference is it's a level of resistance. This is counter trend of counter trend resistance that at this point has been tested multiple times. That's how we define it as an OTZ or an optimal trading zone, which adds a lot of accuracy to support and resistance trades. The next thing I want to talk about is trend continuation levels. How do we define them as OTZs or optimal trading zones? What we just talked about was a counter trend level being an OTZ. It's the same exact rule. We would plot lines. If we had this exact situation, let's actually do market replay just so I can give you a really good example of this. Let's say the market's right here. Just kidding. Apparently that doesn't want to work for me. Let me, I guess I'll reload the page. I'm stuck guys. I don't know what to do at this point. Okay, here we go. So let's, uh, let's try that one more time. Market replay mode. Let's go here. Okay. If the market's right here and you point out your level of trend continuation support when we're in an uptrend that's going to be the previous level of resistance that was broken right so once you have that pointed out in order to classify or validate this as an otz or optimal trading zone the only thing you would do is scroll the chart out and look left and ask yourself was this level tested in the past and the answer here is absolutely we had a couple of times this level was tested as support. So in terms of trend continuation, you're aligning yourself not only with the trend of the market here on the New Zealand Yen, but you're also aligning yourself with a level of structure resistance. And you're also aligning yourself with what we call an OTZ or optimal trading zone because that level of structure resistance that should turn into support if we're in a healthy trend also happens to be a level that's been tested more than twice in historic data. That's the way we define optimal trading zones. What I want to do next is show you how to use multiple time frames to add even more accuracy to this. Again, in trading, all we're doing is building a massive amount of confluence to give ourselves the best edge possible to make money throughout a large sample size. So now what we're going to do is take a look at how to use structure support and resistance on multiple time frames to increase accuracy. I'll see you there. 
All right, so first off, if you know more about support and resistance than you did before watching this video, it would mean a lot to me if you go ahead and smash that like button. Also, comment below if you're still here. This has been a long one, but I'm glad you stuck with me. It's almost over. We only have two more sections to go through, and the next section we're going to go into is multiple time frame support and resistance. So firstly, is this, let's, let's go ahead and scroll this chart up so you can see what I'm talking about. Is this an OTZ? Let's do a little quiz. Yes or no? If you said yes, you were absolutely right. The reason is this is a level of resistance that was the latest one broken, pulled back into, and it's been tested multiple times, classifying it as an OTZ or optimal trading zone. If you got that right, good job. This is also a trade that I sent out in the email analysis program, EAP, that I run. It's our VIP training program. If you're interested in that, it's linked in the description. I'll put a screenshot to the left side of the screen. This is actually a trade we got into. It only hit one target for a one-to-one, -one, so not like a massive trade or anything, but was a winning trade. So with that being said, and now that you know about the OTZ, let's talk about multiple time frames. In the case of the Euro dollar, if we zoom out to the daily chart, I know they're already pointed out in green and red, but ask yourself why. Really dig into this. Why would they be pointed out in green and red in terms of the major levels of resistance and support on this time frame? On the daily chart, this level is an OTZ because it was tested multiple times. On the daily chart, this level is an OTZ because it was tested multiple times. And what we're doing with multiple time frame confluence is we're finding our OTZs on a higher time frame and then dropping down to lower time frames to find entries, which adds a massive amount of accuracy as well. Just like adding the OTZ and multiple times tested adds accuracy. This is another confluence that we use to add even more accuracy is looking for the levels on a higher time frame and looking for entries on a smaller time frame. Now, a question I get asked all the time is Steven, does this work on multiple time frames? Does it work on day trading time frames? The answer is yes. Guys, I'm a swing trader. Almost all of my trades are taken on a four hour chart and they're based on levels on a daily chart. That's the reason I give you examples on those time frames is because that's what I do. But in your case, if you're a day trader and you're trying to use multiple time frames, you can go down to lower time frames and every bit of this still applies. And by the way, in every financial market that uses candlesticks, this information also applies. But if you were a day trader, look in the top left with me, I'll try to zoom in on it to make it easier to see. And these are the time frames I use, right? What you see on the chart is what I consider up and down time frames. So whenever I say this, understand that. If you're trading the five minute chart as a day trader, you're gonna go up one time frame. When I say up one time frame for your level of resistance or support, I mean the 15 minute chart. If you're trading the 15 minute chart, you're gonna go up one time frame. What time frame would that be? The one hour chart. If you're trading on the one hour chart, and what I mean by trading is your entries or on the one hour chart, you would look for those levels of structure on the four hour chart. Hopefully you're starting to understand now, that's the way I personally use multiple time frames. And again, when using multiple time frames, what we're doing is finding our levels of structure on higher time frames and looking for entries on lower time frames. This is an example of finding trend continuation but counter trend. What I wanna do now is show you an example of finding a trend continuation level on a high time frame and then using a lower time frame to enter the market. And directly after this, we're gonna talk about some of the entry reasons that I use in these areas. So Euro Yen is a great example, and it's a chart we've already looked at of a higher time frame trend continuation level. So right now, what we have on the daily chart is this market has just broke above what? The previous level of resistance. With that being the case, we're waiting on a pullback to this level to become support. The way we utilize multiple time frames using support and resistance is after we get a pullback into this area, what we're going to do is drop down one time frame just to see if you're getting it. Now that I'm on the daily, if I drop down one time frame, what time frame will I be on? Remember, we're just going up from here, right? So if I'm on the daily and I'm dropping down one time frame, my entry is going to be on the four hour chart. So what I'll do in this case is I'm waiting for that pullback into this green zone, right? So let's drop down to the four hour. What's going to happen? is if this market has a pullback, now that I have my zone drawn in, it, between the area of 130.71 and 130.23, I'm gonna be looking in that area for possible entries to the upside. And we're gonna go over those entries in just a second. But this is how I would be looking at OTZs on higher time frames and trading in them on lower time frames to help me increase accuracy using multiple time frames with support and resistance. 
Now, for the final part of this lesson, I know it's been a long one. Again, thank you for sticking around. We're going to talk about entries. How do you actually enter the market? It's great to understand support and resistance and how to point out you know, optimal trading zones that are likely to push the market around. But if you don't know how to enter a trade, it's good for nothing. So let's go ahead and dive into entries right now. I know it seems like a really long time ago, but if you'll remember back to the very beginning of this video, I was showing you a New Zealand yen trade that ended up working out in my favor. And the reason I showed you that trade is because all of these factors came together really well in order to create an accurate trading opportunity. So what I'm going to do right now is play you a clip from me actually entering that trade so you can see me entering it so you know I actually took it live. And then also directly after that clip, I'm going to break down the entire trade combining all these factors and define the entry reason I used along with stops and targets as well. So let's play that clip and I'll be right back. What's up guys? So here we have a New Zealand yen trade. It's a head and shoulders pattern. I'm going to jump into here 2% risk on this specific trade. I'm going to define the reasons behind it in just a second. Let me make sure everything's right and I can sell. So let's go ahead and click the sell button. And I'm now involved in this New Zealand trade going short based on this head and shoulders pattern. I'll keep you guys updated on how this trade plays out. All right, so you just saw how that New Zealand yen trade worked out, but what was my reason for actually getting into the trade as in my entry reason and also the analysis beforehand? Let's talk about the analysis beforehand first. So you see this green zone here. Just to see if you're understanding things, it's good to give you little quizzes along the way. What type of level is this for the New Zealand yen? If this was previous resistance where people were taking profit, pushing the market down, we see multiple red candles here, obviously that's a pullback and obviously this is our latest swing high that happened before the break above and continuation in this uptrend. With that being the case, what type of level is this green zone? That would be our trend continuation level. So just to give you context of the preparation you need when you're trading, I was prepared for this market to head lower into this zone. And this is a zone I was going to look for buying opportunities in based on the entries we're about to discuss. But instead of that happening, or let me start like this. What's the other thing I need to look for? I'm looking for my trend continuation place. I've already found that on the daily chart. What I need to look for next is the reversal zone, the resistance above price, the highest high above the 50 period moving average. What's the resistance price will inevitably hit if we continue higher at this moment in time? Let's go ahead and check. What we have to do is we put a horizontal line on price itself. And then we scroll the chart back and we ask ourselves, what's the next level of resistance price will hit if it continues higher? Now that we've scrolled back, we can see that it's this level right here. And this is just regular resistance until we find out that it's been tested multiple times. At the point that it's been tested multiple times, it now validates it as a OTZ or optimal trading zone on our higher time frame. My next step, is to drop down how many time frames? One time frame. So if I'm on the daily, what would I drop down to? I'd be dropping down to the four hour, right? And in this case, we did all of our analysis on the four hour and dropped down to the hourly. Hopefully that didn't confuse you very much. Right now we're on the four hour. I was mistaken. This trade was actually taken on the one hour. Everything still applies. Just to show you it works on multiple time frames. What I would be doing now is dropping down to what time frame? If I'm on the one hour looking at my OTZ, I'm dropping down to the, I mean, excuse me, I did it again. If I'm on the four hour looking at OTZs, I'm dropping down to the one hour for entry. So now we have dropped down to that one hour time frame. What I look for, just to give you a brief explanation really quickly, in these zones is, I keep my trading so simple, it's not even funny. What I look for in these zones is simple price patterns. Two simple price patterns, double tops and bottoms or head and shoulders patterns slash reverse head, what do you call those? upside down head and shoulder patterns, uh, inverse, inverse head and shoulder for a buy trade. Don't let that confuse you. It's just an upside down head and shoulders pattern, but that's all I look for in these zones is price patterns. Those two alone, I look for double tops and bottoms and I look for head and shoulder patterns in these zones. So as we get into this zone, if I start to move the market a bit here, we get what? If you understand head and shoulders patterns, great. You already know that this is the start of one because we have a shoulder, the start of a head, 
and we can continue this pattern. I'll continue showing you this. If you don't understand head and shoulder patterns, I have a full video that explains everything you need to know about head and shoulder patterns. Man, I use that title a lot. And it'll be in the top uh, right hand side of the screen. I don't have time to go over all my rules for price patterns right now because this video is already over 30 minutes long. But if you'll continue looking with me here on the chart and I click play, you'll see that we have what? Created one shoulder, created the head of this pattern and created the other shoulder. At this point, we have a valid head and shoulders pattern for the way I trade them. That was my reason for entering after the head and shoulders pattern. Remember, my dog just went crazy. Remember, remember when we're trading, and again, Lily, shh. So, when we're trading, what we're doing is adding all these confluences together. So right now, we have a market that's in a level of resistance. It's not just a level of resistance, it's also an OTZ, an optimal trading zone, because it was tested multiple times. It is also coming to this area on a higher time frame level of structure, which adds even more accuracy. And now, waiting for an entry reason like a price pattern, head and shoulders in this case, gives you all the confluence you need to have a very high likelihood of winning the trade. That's what you want whenever you're trading is a high likelihood to win. At this point, we have a high likelihood to win the trade. Now wait for one thing, and it's at the end of this head and shoulder pattern, I need a red candle to show me that we have selling pressure. So after we've hit this other shoulder, like we have right here with this long wicked green candle, after that, I need to see a red candle. My entry was on the next red candle. I think it was, I actually saw this a little bit uh, later, maybe the, yeah, it was the next candle or so when I actually entered the market, but I entered right after seeing that. And as you can see, price went in my favor. And why do you think I had targets right here at this level? Remember on our higher time frame, this was our level of trend continuation support. Let me show you something cool. Whenever I hit play, what happened there? The market was supported by that area, at least for a moment. Look, it's not, not going to happen all the time. And we're also not going to end up getting huge moves out of price every time. But the market was supported in this area, at least for a small period of time. So in terms of entries in these zones, I will clarify this one more time. I look for simple price patterns. And in the case of this trade, it was a head and shoulder pattern. Other, If it, if it would have been a double top here, would I have entered? Absolutely. A double top with a red candle that shows me selling pressure is a cool entry. If I would have got a double bottom here, right over here, I would have entered in a long trade. The reason is because I use these price patterns in confluence with everything else we've talked about in order to place trades using support and resistance. Now, I don't want you to think that understanding all of this is going to create a profitable trading career. I know for a fact you feel great right now because you just learned a shitload about support and resistance trading, but that doesn't equal a profitable trading career. There's so much more that goes into it, including having a solid risk management plan that keeps you out of your emotions and keeps you from blowing your account, staying disciplined to that plan, having rules for stops and targets, things I don't have time to go over at this exact moment. But we do have something called the EAP training program. It's our VIP group and you are welcome to join us. We've had a few graduates that have moved on started their profitable trading career and we're ready to start accepting some new members. I like to keep the members low because I already spend like three hours a day answering student emails. This is a mentor program. If you have questions about trading, you email and what you're emailing or who you're emailing is me. And you're going to get me responding to you if it's a trading related question. It also comes with a full training course on the Forex market, along with the exact strategies I use. Three to five email alerts per week, uh, best setups of the week video every Monday, where I'm showing you zones like this that are OTZs that I'm paying attention to. And the best part of the EAP training program is that it comes with a 60 day money back guarantee at any point you're not satisfied or don't feel like you've gotten enough value compared to the price you paid for the course, then just email my support staff. We will get you refunded ASAP. With that being the case, it's kind of a risk-free offer. If you feel like taking your trading to the next level and you're ready to invest in yourself and invest in a course, we would love to have you. That link is the top link in the description. If not, that is totally fine too. Just make sure you keep it locked here by subscribing and clicking that notification bell so you do not miss the next valuable content we come out with. Make sure to smash that like button, comment below if you made it till the end, and I will see you in the next video. Talk soon.